In this short video, we're going to play almost a number game to find out how to factor simple trinomials. We've got some new words here. What is a trinomial? Tri, you think about tricycle, triangle, you think of three. A trinomial has three terms. And the ones that we're going to look at three are going to be like 3x squared plus 2x minus 7. And they're going to have a term with a square on the variable. That's our quadratic term. And then there's going to be another term that has a variable, but just raised to the power of 1. That's our linear term. And then just a constant, no variable. That's our constant term. So three terms, a quadratic term, a linear term, and a constant term. Those are the trinomials we want to look at. And in fact, even more importantly, on the quadratic term, we want the coefficient, the number that's multiplied by x squared, to be 1, positive 1. So something like m squared minus 3m minus 15, or y squared, that should be plus 8y. Oops, let me go ahead and fix that while I'm here. All right, let's make that an 8y. Not the same variable. And then there we go. a squared minus 5a plus 6. All right, so where do trinomials come from? They come from the product of binomials, so using FOIL. And so if I take x plus 6 times x plus 5, the four terms I get are x squared plus 6x plus 5x plus 30, and I can combine two like terms, and that's how I wind up with a trinomial. But the linear terms combine to be 1, x squared plus 11x plus 30, so one term in the middle. All right, and if I needed to, I could work backwards because I have all of the information encoded in the coefficient for the linear term and in the constant term. The coefficient for the linear term, the 11, is the sum of the positive 6 and the positive 5, while the positive 30 is a product of positive 6 and positive 5. So if I didn't know where this came from, and I'd like to factor it, undo it, that means write this trinomial as the product of two binomials. Well, because it's a simple trinomial, meaning starting with x squared, I know that I'm going to have the first term as x and x. So the only question is, what is this second term in each set of parentheses. Well, as we saw up here, the constant term 11, I'm sorry, the constant term positive 30 and the coefficient on the x, the 11, tells me that I'm looking for two numbers which multiply to make positive 30 and add to make plus 11. So I could play a little game and figure out what two numbers those are. In this case, we already know because we know where this trinomial came from. So it's going to be plus 6 and plus 5. Well, here's one we don't know where it came from. We have x squared minus 11x minus 60. And so our numbers game is find two numbers which multiply to make negative 60 and add to make negative 11. Now, some people can get this pretty quickly. They can do it in their head, and that's wonderful. It's really just trial and error. You just have to go through what are the numbers that multiply to make negative 60 and see which ones will add up to negative 11. But if you get stuck, and it may not be obvious, you start by listing the pairs of numbers that multiply to make negative 60. Well, one's got to be negative, one's got to be positive. And so here are, is a list of pairs that multiply to make negative 60. And do any of these pairs add up, the numbers in the pairs add to make negative 11? 
And the answer is no. Uh, that means we that that does not mean we can't factor it. It just means that we really didn't list all of them. Uh, I could have a negative one times sixty, but it could have been one times negative sixty. And I could have had two times negative thirty, three times negative twenty, and so on. Just one of them has to be negative. One has to be positive. So I get a hint here that, well, I don't get negative 11, but if I add the negative 4 and the positive 15, I get positive 11. And that's really all the information I need because then I can swap the signs and deal with a positive 4 and a negative 15. That will still multiply to make negative 60, but now it adds to make negative 11. So the two numbers I should use are positive 4 and negative 15. So again, there'll be two binomials. The first term in each is x, or whatever variable we have. And then we just played that game to find positive 4 and negative 15 as the second terms. All right, in this example, we see that we don't have a simple trinomial, but no matter what we're type of factoring we're trying to do, really the first thing we should be looking for is a common factor. And sure enough, if I look at this, there is a number which divides evenly into 3, 30, and or negative 30, and negative 72, and that number is 3. And then there's an x term in it or an x factor in every term so I can factor out an x as well. And then what's left over inside the parentheses is a simple trinomial. So now we're going to factor that and we'll still keep the 3x as a factor. So we're going to wind up with three factors in total. So for the simple trinomial in parentheses, I need to find two numbers which multiply to make negative 24 and add to make negative 10. So I went ahead and did that in my head. I know that one has to be positive and one has to be negative because their product is negative 24. And the numbers that work are negative 12 and positive 2. That multiplies to make negative 24. And when I add them together, I get negative 10, which is what I wanted. So in the end, I have three factors, the 3x, which is the common factor, and then two binomials, x minus 12 and x plus 2. All right, here we have another trinomial, which is not a simple trinomial, but again we have a common factor. And here is a case where we would like to factor out a negative common factor. And the reason is that I don't want to have inside the parentheses something that has a negative x squared. I'd like to have a positive x squared. So again, I'm looking at 2, 20, and 48. The largest number that divides into them is 2, but I'm going to factor out negative 2. And then among the x's, the smallest exponent is x squared, so x squared comes out. And then every term has a factor of y, so y will be a common factor as well. Then what's left inside the parentheses is a simple trinomial with a positive x squared, which is what we want. So again, we'll need two numbers whose product is positive 24 and sum is negative 10. Now, <coughs> since they, the sum is negative, but the product is positive, that tells us we must have two negative numbers, because a negative times a negative makes a positive, but a negative plus a negative makes a negative. So two numbers that will multiply to make positive 24, add to make negative 10. Those are negative 6 and negative 4. So again, I have my three terms, the common factor and the two binomials. <coughs>
All right, so let's look at another one, which is not a simple uh, trinomial. Again, there is a common factor, though, which is 2x. And then what's left over is a simple polynomial x squared, or simple trinomial, x squared plus x plus 5. And we would need to find two numbers which multiply to make positive 5 and add to make positive 1. Because remember, plus x is the same as plus 1x. Well, there are no numbers that multiply to make positive 5, at least no whole numbers and add to make plus 1. And so our conclusion is that this polynomial inside the parentheses is prime. So our factorization ends with just the common factor. We cannot factor that any further. So in our summary, uh, we're looking at simple trinomials. We have three terms. The coefficient on the squared term is 1. We're going to factor it as two binomials. The first term is always x in each pair of parentheses. And to find the other two numbers, we're looking for two numbers which multiply to make c and add to make b. If you can't find any such numbers, then the polynomial is prime. And just as a reminder, always, 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 we're going to look for a common factor when we're using any factorization technique.